Hi friends, Lorelai Black here from Blade and Broom. Today we're going to be talking about ancestral healing. Uh, the topic actually covers a few different concepts and so we're just going to be focusing on a couple of them, uh, a couple of different aspects of what that can mean. Um, and I hope that you find what I have to say useful and a contribution to the conversation. I am definitely not trying to posit myself as an expert on the topic, but I have a few ideas that I would like to share with you from my experience and my observation. I too am on a path of ancestral healing and working with my ancestors to uh, heal some generational wounds and have done a lot of study and shadow work to try to deal with those issues. I want to share some techniques and some concepts that I have found useful in my own practice. Really, that's what I'm trying to do with the channel in general. There are some things in which I'm extraordinarily knowledgeable. I've been doing um, that specific work for 25 years, and I have a, a great depth of knowledge and practice. There are other topics that are new to me, and I'm exploring them alongside you because I'm a student, too. Um, I feel like we're all students. Um, of some aspect of our craft. And then there are other areas where we are very knowledgeable teachers and have uh, a great wealth of um, expertise to share. This is an area where um, I have a, a great deal of knowledge of my ancestors, but, but coming to a place of understanding about ancestral healing and about generational wounds and about the traumas and being able to share how to heal those is still new for me and it's something that I'm working through um, and, I, and I probably will be for the rest of my life if I'm being really honest. I think that um, our ancestors are, are really crying out for that right now and are ready for that and I think that we're feeling that as a society right now. Um, I think that a lot of us are really hearing that right now and I think it's one of the reasons that we're hearing about it um, in the world around us not just on the streets, which we are definitely seeing a lot of um, a lot of that coming back up to the surface right now, but we're also hearing about it in social media about the presence of um, the presence of the past coming back up to face us right now. And we're seeing um, we're really sort of seeing our ancestors say, do something, make this right, help us make this right. And this is an opportunity for us. So um, to help address these, these wounds that have been inflicted over time. I think that it's important to understand that there are lots of ways to approach this, just like there are lots of different um, traditional ways of working with ancestors and being able to find what fits best for you is gonna be very important. Um, but the most important thing is to start doing the work um, if it's something that you're being called to do, and I think that if you're watching this video, it maybe is, um, start doing the work. So um, what is the work, right? What is it that we're talking about? We're having a lot of difficult conversations these days. Um, we're having a lot of difficult conversations throughout, certainly here in the United States, which is obviously where I'm based, um, just really, really hard talks that have to be had, and they're not always going well, these talks, um, which is evident. I'm here in Louisville making magic, right here in River City, right? Um, and here in Louisville, we're on our 23rd day of protests. There's just so much change that has to happen, deep change, and that change is rooted in our past. It's rooted in trauma and damage. Um, that has to be addressed and ancestral healing is a place where we as witches can um, can work on that it's not just in our country that we're having these conversations obviously we've seen um, that this dialogue is happening worldwide and it's happening uh, within families and it's happening in, within the family, within the family of the craft. It's happening within covens. Um, I've seen and had really interesting conversations and really hard conversations happening um, within 
within the family structure that is a coven. We're really today talking about that family, the, the actual family structure that is our ancestors, whether that's spiritual ancestors, biological bloodline ancestors, you know, or adopted family ancestors, but um, those, those people that we consider family, whether that's spiritual, vocational, bloodline, etc. Jessica Winston from the House of Hoodoo in New Orleans uh, posted on uh, her Instagram account that one of the things that white folks need to be doing is petitioning their ancestors and working with them to get them to stop the spiritual warfare that's happening between um, white ancestors and black ancestors with the concept that what's happening above is what's echoed happening below and that there's still oppression and still that racism happening on the other side of the veil. And I think that that's definitely one valid approach that can be taken. And it got me to thinking about what other approaches might be taken. The concept with that is that what's happening here on the physical realm is being echoed or stems from what's happening in the spiritual realm. And of course that's often described as an above below scenario or upper, middle, and lower realms. Um, that gets sort of condensed or distilled into the phrase as above, so below, as within, so without. Um, these are just ways to simplify these spiritual concepts. One of the points that I really want to make with this particular video is that ancestral healing is not necessarily just applicable to what's happening in the world around us today with issues like racial injustice and and the kinds of uh, oppression and, and systemic change that we need to make uh, in our society today. Certainly that is a big place where we're seeing it. And again, I'm going to echo the idea that I feel like um, we're seeing this stem up and bubble up right now because this is uh, a concept whose time has certainly come and our ancestors are here at the forefront. They're pushing forward and saying, this has to be dealt with and we are, we are ready. A lot of our ancestors are ready. We're seeing opposition to that too because there are a lot of folks who's, who they themselves are not ready in the present and their ancestors are also not ready for that change. Um, and they've sort of got this, the full backing of those people. But one of the reasons that we're seeing so many so many people of so many races stand up and say, yes, black lives matter. And we are not going to stand for the systemic racism anymore is because our ancestors are actually ready for that change too. Um, we've been doing the work and they've been evolving too. You know, they don't just stop their progression at death. They keep moving. They keep evolving. Um, they keep growing. And um, there, there's just, there's a lot to learn and a lot to discuss about that, that I can't necessarily cover all in this video about how that soul growth works, but it's tied to concepts that we covered in the Triple Souls video. Um, and that we could go into more depth if we talk more about what's happening with the red soul and what's happening with the white soul and, and that type of thing. Um, and I encourage you to watch that video to have more of an understanding of the fact that our souls are eternal and that the red soul, the black soul, the white soul, the things happen with them after we pass away in this life, that those those parts move on and that things are continuing to happen with them and that um, and that, that ancestral soul is um, is connected, right? So what ends up happening is that we have the opportunity even beyond death our souls continue to grow and of course within a great many traditions worldwide and in the philosophies that are embraced by quite a few although I can can't say all traditional witchcraft traditions the soul is re-embodied parts of the soul are re-embodied um, and given an opportunity for new life, 
and other parts of the soul continue acting as guides, continue acting as counselors to the family. But they're growing. They're still growing. So obviously complicated and difficult to distill into a video, but I'm hoping that you're with me. There are other kinds of traumas. There are other kinds of wounds, right? We're not just talking about the this one big issue. Well, I can't state enough how big this issue is and how pressing it is um, right now. Um, but you may, you may be finding other places in your life that have uh, a generational trauma that needs healing. You may be finding that there's, um, that there are patterns that keep getting repeated somewhere in your family. Um, that, that if you were to look back at the stories that are told or that, that you look back at the patterns that you can see in the lives of different people in, in different generations in your family, that, that there's always somebody, that there's always somebody in each generation that has the same issue, that there's a health problem that gets passed on. Um, and so part of what has been studied recently by, um, by scientists, by biologists, by geneticists, is there's this concept that they're calling epigenetics. And I'm not going to get bogged down in the scientific details about it because I'm honestly a little less interested in the science than I am in what it speaks to the spirituality. Um, so epigenetics says that there is trauma that gets passed. And there's also potentially good things that get passed. There are good memories that get passed. But there, there's information that gets passed with the genes that's, it's basically like memory. There's like memory that gets passed with the genes. Things that we wouldn't speak to each other, that we don't tell each other. Stories that we're not sharing, but that get passed down. So there are traumas and there are hurts and there are um, pain. There's pain that gets passed from generation to generation. I would have to believe, based on my Germanic roots and um, belief in something called Hamanya, that also things like luck get passed down. So within, there's a Scandinavian word called Hamanya that has come to just mean luck, but it's, um, it used to be tied up with an idea of a a female spirit of, um, of good fortune. The tripartite soul is a cross-cultural concept. Um, but in the Hamingya, you see echoes of what I have described as the red soul. Um, because the Hamingya can in theory, be passed to another member of the family. It becomes the, that ancestral soul that, that I have described in, other, in the other video as the red soul. Um, so it can be passed along family lines and that family luck. And I know, if you think about it, I know that you know that person that has just that, that family luck. That, that, or that, and it might be I have a friend who describes it as strong luck, right? Like it might not be good luck and it might not be bad luck. It's just strong luck. And then there's the filgia or the filgia. I might be pronouncing it very badly and I apologize if I'm pronouncing it very badly, but there's the filgia, um, which becomes, um, sort of evolves into what um, within traditional witchcraft in the British Isles, we would call the fetch. Um, and so the fetch is, has been described by us as the black soul. That's the one we send out on astral flight. That's the one that takes on aspects of our fate and fortune. What makes it so interesting is this idea that that this red soul, whether you think of it as the humming or you think of it as the ancestral soul, you think of it as the bone soul, which is a concept that you see in other types of shamanism, other cultures, versions of shamanism, this idea of that soul that lives in the marrow of the bones. I know. <laughs> um, that it gets passed on. And we've had that idea before we ever heard about epigenetics. We knew that. 
shamans have known that we've known it for a long time that we pass on these memories we pass on our pain and we pass on our joys too we pass on our luck we can pass on what is good about us and we can pass on what is bad about us too what is shameful what is hurtful we can pass on the hurts we have done and we can pass on the hurts we have borne even when we try to shield our children from it even when we try to shield our grandchildren from it even when we send our children away from us to shield them from what has been done to us or when we deny the past that we've been a part of the things that we have done because we don't want anybody to know that shameful act that we committed so and I'm bringing that up because again there are things that are coming back to bear right now in our society that our ancestors participated in or had done to them or both because if you are in America you may have bloodlines where you are both you have both of these things in your blood and you may very well be coming from this place of extreme internal conflict over not knowing what to feel not knowing how to feel about it or not knowing what to do or maybe you feel very strongly but you don't know what action to take or how to resolve how you feel about your family who you love the family that raised you or the people that you feel proud about in your family line because you know that they did some of these people did amazing things really good things but you also know that there are people in your family that had to have done atrocious things just unspeakably bad things and how do you deal with that so that's where we are right now what do we do what do we do how can we heal ourselves through ancestor work and how can we help our ancestors heal because some of them are in desperate need still of being lifted up of being healed and helped and comforted they've been you know on the other side hurting and um, this brings me to the idea that um, and I, I'm sure most of I'm sure you've heard the phrase that hurt people hurt people so if you haven't heard it right people who have been hurt are going to hurt other people if you have been a victim of abuse you probably know exactly how true that statement is you've seen it you've seen it up close in your family um, you've seen it up close in your home you've seen it up close in your life and I don't need to explain that to you right if you haven't seen it then this concept is going to be really hard for you to get and you've lived a blessed and fortunate life and I would encourage you to educate yourself about the cycle of trauma and the cycle of abuse and what that looks like and how that impacts people we've all done things that we're not proud of everybody has and that's just the reality of it everybody has and we all need to find ways to make amends so how can we work with our ancestors for their healing and for ours because that's what we're talking about we have to end the cycle of trauma for ourselves and for our ancestors and we're going to do that through a multi-prong approach get the help you need by all means necessary and again i'm not just talking about the big societal issues here although i am talking about the big societal issues but i'm also talking about the personal and the interpersonal issues so i'm talking about therapy i'm talking about books i'm talking about um, interventions I'm talking about professional guidance I'm talking about um, if you don't have access to therapists and professionals and um, 
and, and that type of thing. I'm talking about um, seeking out the professionals who are on YouTube and getting um, getting the advice that you can that way. I'm talking about support groups. I'm talking about support networks. I'm talking about um, seeking help to get you out of a dangerous situation if you're in one by all means necessary, whatever you need. Um, it's impossible for me to address every way that that could look because there are so many different aspects of what you could be dealing with in terms of that generational trauma. It could be emotional, it could be a medical concern that's popping up throughout your family line. It could be, you know, facing head on these social issues. Um, it could be an interpersonal kind of conflict. It could be a vocational issue. There's just so many ways that it could be manifesting. And my sense is that you probably have a good idea of what it is, that you're seeing that pattern, that, you're, that you have an understanding of how it's coming through. So another prong on that approach of ending the cycle of trauma in terms of working with our ancestors is that we have to actively connect with our ancestors. So actively connecting with our ancestors is going to look like probably setting up some kind of ancestor altar or some kind of space that we have dedicated to them. And um, in the video that I talk about actually working with the ancestors, I show you what my ancestor altar looks like and it's kind of big and, and very obvious that it's an ancestor altar, but it doesn't have to be. It can be smaller than that. Um, you know, it can be a, a, a shelf, um, where you've got some pictures above it and then, you know, just a place where you're able to put out some, some food and drink on occasion and some incense and that type of thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, decked out necessarily. Something that speaks to you and something where you can specifically connect with them. Maybe you want to get started on genealogical research connected with family of origin ancestors or with um, adoptive ancestors. Or maybe you want to do research into other types of ancestors, whether that's um, spiritual ancestors or vocational ancestors, lineage ancestors for your spiritual tradition, that type of thing. There are lots of different ways that you can um, connect with your ancestors, but it's really important to actually start connecting with them because you can't do the other types of work if you don't have that relationship established. So start establishing that relationship if you haven't already. Mallory Vaudois in her book, Honoring Your Ancestors, uses a great phrase that says, uh, you're something along the lines of, when you start to reach back to your ancestors, they reach forward. And again, I strongly suspect that if you're watching a video like this, um, they're reaching forward forward to you. They're already tapping you on the shoulder. You're probably already hearing from them. So another aspect of this ending the cycle of trauma and doing healing work with our ancestors is actually engaging in spiritual healing. I'm going to talk about right here, I'm going to talk about some different ways that that can look within traditional witchcraft because that's the practice that I know and feel most comfortable speaking to. European witchcraft has always had ancestor work within it. It just hasn't been writing about it very much. So um, I'm hoping that that changes and I'm hoping that we're a little bit more forthcoming with our practices about that because we've always been doing it. Um, we just, I don't know why we haven't been talking about it very much. So I want to speak to what I know and have done. I don't feel comfortable educating people about things that I haven't personally practiced um, or been taught to do, I guess. I don't like teaching what I haven't been taught to teach, if that makes sense. Within Tradcraft, it's not uncommon for us to seethe or tread the mill to find our way into a trance state. And if you don't know what seething or treading the mill is, we're probably going to have to do whole other videos on that. Um, but the short version is that tread... Mm, no short versions. Look them up for now and we'll talk about seething and treading the mill in other videos. But essentially to work ourselves into a trance state 
and then to fly out to the past in order to encounter an ancestor at a traumatic point in their life, most especially at their death. So having a traumatic end of life transition and to offer them dwell. Dwell is an old term for belladonna. So really offering them a smoother transition process to help ease that, um, to ease that really traumatic and painful death, um, to give them a better death so that that, um, so that, that that point wasn't, didn't carry so much pain from them forward in their line down to the present time. That's one example um, that can and has been done. So I offer that as an example. It doesn't necessarily just have to be done at death. It could be done at other points where uh, there some hugely traumatic event could be happening to that person, to that ancestor. Typically when we're talking about traditional witchcraft, what we're actually talking about is European rooted shamanism with a dose of ceremonial or hermetic magic thrown in um, as those systems got brought from Eastern traditions. There is some undeniably mixed in to the traditions. What we have then is a really broad range of what you think of as traditional shamanic tools and techniques. Those shamanic tools worldwide look really similar. Um, the, the trancing and the journeying don't look dissimilar when you go from culture to culture. Um, this the singing and the and the trancing and the journeying and the and the the flying out what we call flying out but the but the journeying into different realms to retrieve soul parts and to to sing people back to health and to and to to dance these things and and to weave things back together like it it all looks very similar in different parts of the world almost any parts of the world that you go to it it has very very similar practices so you can using the tools of witchcraft brooms and stangs and um, these transvective tools that we use in order to get ourselves into the other realms go into the past to confront ancestors, to have dialogue with ancestors, to educate ancestors, to introduce ancestors to your family that may look very different than what they envisioned their family to look like in 2020 um, and also to learn from them to to learn why they made the choices that they made um, to, to learn the wisdom that they carried to empathize with them about their fears and their hopes for their children and um, and all of the things, all of the reasons why they made the choices that they did and to, to bridge gaps and to start forming bonds. We can perform that journey work to encounter the past, present, or future in any of the realms that we know of on whatever version of the world tree that we use because those things vary a bit by tradition but they're all valid right they they exist so whether you're approaching it through Yggdrasil or you're approaching it through the spiral castle to confront heal or reintegrate the shadow or the shards of that self.
And that's really powerful. And other parts of doing the work are what I call boots on the ground. You can't just do the work in your mind. You can't just do the work at your altar. You have to go out and do the work in some way in the world. And um, that may look like getting involved in a protest. That may look like donating to a cause. That may look like having conversations with your family about the issues that are surfacing, about actually confronting the kinds of trauma that your family has been experiencing. That may look like having hard conversations with your partner or with your children or with other members of, of your home or your household about, um, about the things that you've been experiencing and that you've seen. Not necessarily, depending on how out of the broom closet you are about what you've actually been experiencing in your trance work or um, that type of thing. You know, you may not want to go into all those details, but things may be coming up for you and you may be discovering a lot just about yourself. You will undoubtedly be discovering a lot about yourself. And so you are probably going to need to, as you and after you have processed some of that stuff, need to implement the changes in your actual life. Otherwise, they're not going to stick, right? So you're going to have to do that boots on the ground kind of work. Making changes to policy, making changes to systems, making changes to the way you handle things within your home or the way that you handle situations as they arise. Because if you keep doing the same thing you've always done in the same way you've always done it, you're going to keep getting exactly the same results. So something's got to give once you know you've got to change. Another part of this prong is to be prepared to dance with your shadow because um, this is definitely going to bring up uncomfortable things for you. It's going to bring up things that you're going to have to look at within yourself. It's going to bring up things that you have to look at about your family um, and about family members. There's just no way around that. So um, I think that's one of the things that's very healthy about traditional craft is that it doesn't really allow room, I don't think, for what is called spiritual bypassing. So the concept of spiritual bypassing is the idea that um, that you just sort of take a love and light approach to everything and that you don't allow room for dark thoughts and, and negativity, that you just sort of embrace a everything's going to be okay and I only accept positive vibes here sort of approach and while I'm definitely not recommending that you go around kicking puppies because that would be bad um, the idea with embracing the shadow is that it is normal to feel angry and that it is normal to feel what we would the entire spectrum of human emotion that feeling your feelings is a normal thing and that having negative impulses is a normal thing what's not okay is acting them out in destructive ways the idea is to learn how to sit with them the idea is to learn how to feel them and how to move through them and how to channel them in into ways that serve you and that don't tear other people down and that don't destroy the world around you. Um, how, do we, how do we work through that? This is where I once again encourage you to seek out professional help when you're dealing with really big stuff, including getting therapy if you can, um, and looking for um, therapeutic professionals that have made materials available on YouTube or through books or through that type of thing because getting the resources that you can in order to help you process this stuff is going to be very helpful. I hope that you have found today's video useful. I would love to hear your thoughts and your comments. I would like to know what you do in your practice to connect with your ancestors to help them find healing and to find healing for yourself um, in working with them. I feel that this is important work and that this is definitely part of the work of witchcraft. And I would like feedback and thoughts about what you're doing out there.
So I am looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next Monday at noon. Links down below, all that kind of good stuff. Do all the things. Bye, guys.